Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the East Riding of Yorkshire series. Together with the unparished city of Hull, it forms the county of the same name. There's 172 parishes here. Which one are we in today? Welcome back to the East Riding of Yorkshire, everybody. Now, today I'm doing one of the biggest ones I've done in the East Riding for quite some time. I'm stood in a car park, which is in front of a sports hall and a playgroup and a, and a playground is there and there's all sorts of other things here as well. It's like a community hub. This is at the northernmost extent of the large village of Leven. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Leven, which lies between the towns of Beverley and Hornsey in the East Riding of Yorkshire, some seven miles inland from the Holderness coastline. Originally recorded as Leven, spelt with an A after the first E, this is a commuter village for both towns, as well as for people who work in Hull and Bridlington. That's not surprising. Leven is situated just north of a major road junction, where the A1035 meets the A165, giving it easy access to all four towns. It's also a key factor as to why Leven is so big. Historically, Leven was a small settlement and has only expanded rapidly since the 1960s. Industrially, this is a place that relied once again on farming, but thanks to the Bethel family, who were lords of the manor in the 19th century, Leven would soon thrive thanks to a canal built between the village and the River Hull. Leven was also one of the places that was earmarked for a railway station on the North Holderness Light Railway, which was proposed to run between Beverley and North Frodingham. There would have been stations at both Ticton and Routh too, however the line was never constructed and its plans were abandoned in 1903 in favour of a bus service. The centre of the village is a crossroads, around which are most of the local amenities, and the Leven sculpture, which is carved out of a tree trunk. Oh, and there's also an airfield in this one as well. Let's get walking, folks. Before we go for a walk around this one, we must first address Beverley Road. That's what I'm currently driving on here. To the immediate south is White Cross Junction, a roundabout which gets its name thanks to a wayside cross, the shaft of which still stands. This road has a few landmarks on either side of it, but unfortunately they're mostly out of shot. One of them is Leven House, a magnificent early 19th century mansion, which is set back from the road to the left. Beverley Road used to be the main road around here at one time. Traffic used to come right through Leven Village before a bypass was constructed around it to the east in 1994, following a campaign by local residents. Beverley Road was also a turnpike too, and was made so in 1761. Next to the White Cross is the equally impressive Toll House, a picture of which is on your screen right now. Our main walk today begins at Leven Sports Hall. 
Situated on North Street on the outskirts of the village, many of the village's sporting activities take place here, including snooker, pool, darts, dominoes, football, cricket, tennis and badminton. It's a great little venue for all. There's also a preschool in here as well. In front of the hall is a telephone exchange which dates from the times when phones were supplied by the General Post Office. It seems to be still in use. Down North Street now, here's the Hare and Hounds, one of the two pubs in Leven. There used to be four according to records in 1825. The two that have now gone are the Minerva and the Blue Bell. We'll see the new inn later. The pub stands opposite a barber shop at a crossroads where Leven's four main streets, North, South, East and West, all converge. At this junction is a parish notice board on the barber shop wall. Ticket off folks, that makes a hundred now covered in the East Riding. Okay, so running alongside the Hare and Hounds, we have West Street, and there's a sign here. There's a van coming, so I better be quick. Methodist Church is to the left, and to the right is an airfield, and we'll be seeing that at the end of this episode. On West Street there's a couple of businesses, including the chippy which you've just seen, and this shop, a cost cutter, which also serves as Leven's post office. We're not walking the length of West Street here, what we're effectively doing is forming a loop onto South Street, and we'll return to West Street later. This is Church Drive which has some differently styled housing to what's generally around it. There's a path at the end of this street which brings us to a bus stop. Leven is served by two buses, the number 25 from Beverley to Hornsey and also the 24 which connects it to both Hull and Bridlington. Next to it there's an information board which gives you a bit of history about the village, similar to the one we found in Routh. South Street also has a few more shops. That one there is Charters Butchers, a family business founded in 1896 in Bransburton, it relocated to a smaller premises here in Leven. So in front of those shops you've got an information board all about Leven and this tells us what Leven means. As you can see, Leven is the slow moving one, probably referring to a local river or stream. How about that? Okay, next up is the church. This is Holy Trinity Church and standing tall in its churchyard is the War Memorial. This has 19 names on it, 17 from World War I and 2 from World War II. So to the church, which was designated a Grade II listed building in 1968. This is not Leven's original church, nor does it stand on the same site as the old one. We'll discuss where the old one was in a short while, but this one was built in 1843 and 44 on land given by Richard Bethel, largely at the expense of Rector George Ray. It was designed by Robert Chantrell of Leeds in a 13th century style. It has a chancel, a nave with a north transept, a south aisle, porch and a tower. It was consecrated in 1845 and contains part of a 9th century cross shaft and the head of a 15th century cross from the original church. And one of its windows has the England football logo in it, prompting me to sing this line. Three lines on a church. Okay, we're about to go down Westlands Way, which runs alongside the church and then takes us around in a loop up to the next section of the village. Just before we do though, there's a couple of interesting things here. First of all, we've got Leven Primary School, which is uh, voluntary controlled, as you can see. That's what VC stands for. That's on this uh, main road as well. But also, on the other side of the road, you've got this. Now, this is a very, very interesting landmark, very unique. What do you think that is before I tell you? Any ideas? Okay, well, hopefully you've guessed this right. It's the Leven sculpture. This is a bit difficult to read because it's very small. This artwork originates from the middle section of a rare turkey oak tree that stood in the grounds of Holy Trinity Church. The tree is believed to have been planted around the time that the church was built in 1843. Unfortunately, due to, due to disease, the tree was felled in 2003. The stump is still visible along the left-hand side of the wall of the cemetery, about 80 yards to the right of this site. 
The images were hand carved in 2004 by local artist Miss Jackie Ward Lomax. The features are all relevant to the area and are a mix of ideas from pupils at Leven Primary School and the artist's research and imagination. So the characters on it, we've got a working horse, a spiral, a trio of characters, a fish, a Celtic cross, a tractor tire impression, an anchor, bulrushes, a hare, a beer tankard, uh, the millstone and barley and swans. So I wonder how many of those you can spot on this. I'm going to walk around it. There's the anchor at the bottom. There's the trio of characters on the right hand side. There's a cross at the top, that's the Celtic cross. There's the swans. Isn't this just one of the most amazing things you've ever seen? And it's all thanks to the pupils at Leven School, Leven Primary School across the way, and the local artists. Brilliant, absolutely amazing. Until 1964, Leven was a small village which had around 400 residents. The modern village is a far cry from those times because now it's expanded considerably. Westlands Way is one of a number of streets that's been built since the 60s. I found an East Yorkshire flag waving in one of its gardens. Westlands Way runs into South Parade, clearly an older street, and then we make our way north now back towards West Street. On the way, if you glance to your left, you'll see the village's allotments, which I'm sure will please certain people out there. After these, you pass a little cul-de-sac where you can find the Sweetie Spot. It's a local business that sells fudge and sweet treats, with free delivery within the village. And then we emerge back onto West Street, and we continue heading west until we reach a small hamlet called Little Leven. Okay, so now we've reached the end of the road for now. Later on, we'll be heading up there because that is where the airfield is. We have to drive through Little Leven to get to it. So that's for the end of this video. For now though, we're taking a left turn down Car Lane. We're going to find a canal. This isn't the canal, but if we follow Bath Drain, we will find it. This is one of the many drains around Leven and it flows towards the Leven Canal. However, it doesn't join it. Bath Drain flows under the canal thanks to an aqueduct. That's the bridge you can see in your shot now. Leven Canal is no longer in use. It was opened in 1804, having been cut by the order of Mrs. Charlotte Bethel, the Lady of the Manor at that time. It ran for around three and a quarter miles to Leven from the River Hull. It was constructed to allow sailing barges to reach two warehouses at Canal Head on the southern edge of the village. Constructed in 1825, the warehouses served two principal functions, storage of local grain ready for barge transport to Hull and Beverley, and as a depository for coal. The canal remains a site of special scientific interest, and you can walk along its length back to the village. This path emerges onto South Street. Okay, and this area should look fairly familiar to you because this is the area that we ended up in in that first section driving from the main road. Here's the new inn. And then we're going to take a right turn after we've talked about this for a little bit down there. And that will take us up towards the sort of northeastern end of Leven. The second of the two pubs, this is the new inn. Originally, this was a Georgian country house that was later extended to become a coaching inn. Dead opposite the pub, we have High Style, where you can access the back of the school and the local youth centre. That's the wooden building in shot now. A couple more paces and you're at the doctor's surgery, which has a local pharmacy right next door. This is known as Leven and Beeford Medical Practice. High Style is a long straight road which links South Street to East Street. Most of it is fairly old, property-wise, but there are some more post-1964 housing estates off it. At its northeastern end is the former Leven Boys' School, built in 1873. 
It closed as a school in 1911 and has more recently been used as a restaurant. And just before East Street there's a clump of new builds on the right. These are so new they're not even marked on the map yet. Okay, if it seems a bit misty just here, it's not. It's beautiful sunny weather. It's uh, what you can see is a, a chimney that's uh, apparently smoking a little bit too much. There we go. Anyway, we have one street left to see here in Leven, and that is East Street. So if I turn the camera around, you'll see where we're about to go. It's a bit wobbly where I've got the camera here at the moment, so excuse uh, excuse that if it wobbles around. So there's East Street. We're going to take a walk down this. There's a few more landmarks to see, and then turn back towards the sports hall. East Street has quite a bit. This is the Leven Recreational Hall, effectively the Village Hall. It's sometimes also known as the Leven British Legion Hall, and that's difficult to say. It's right next door to the local bowls club. This was formed as East Street Bowling Club in 1930, and they play in the Driffield League. Heading up East Street back to the crossroads, we pass the end of Mill Drive and some very pretty spring flowers. Leven is well maintained, that's for sure. Next is the Methodist Church. This is the only Methodist Church in the village today, but Leven has had chapels for both the Wesleyans and the Primitives in its time. Then there's a couple of interestingly named buildings before we hit the crossroads again. This one's the Old Exchange. Maybe a Corn Exchange, perhaps? This one's a bit more obvious, named the Old Bank House. I'd wager plenty of money on this being an old bank, for some reason. Okay, we find ourselves back at the crossroads where you have the barber shop and the hare and hounds and that means there's only one thing left to do here in Leven and that is to go down West Street again, this time in the car because we are in search of Beverly Airfield. So now we're heading for the airfield via Little Leven. It's believed Little Leven is older than Leven itself, beginning as far back as the days of the ancient Britons. Finds from Leven cars, the marshy land out to the west, back this up. These have included axe heads, leaf-shaped swords, and even a spearhead. Just to the west of Little Leven is Hall Garth, which is the site of Leven's former parish church, St Faith's, which was in use between 1350 and 1843. Once past Little Leven, you're on a rough, bumpy track to Beverly Airfield, which is sometimes known as Linley Hill. Pretty big as airfields go, Beverly Airfield's main occupiers are Hull Aero Club, which was founded in the 1920s and numbered Amy Johnson among its former members. Johnson was born in Hull in 1903 and was the first woman to fly solo from London to Australia. There's no flights like that from here though.
tell you, I kicked up a fair bit of dust down that road. It's uh, very, very, uh, well, unmaintained, shall we say? <laughs> it's a very interesting road to try and drive down. Anyway, the road becomes private at this bridge and the airfield is on the other side. So obviously I'm not gonna go any further than this, but you can see a great view of the airfield from here, to be honest with you. You can see how big it is. You can see some of the markings on the edge of it over there and over the other side. A couple of wind socks, one here, one over there. There's some buildings in the far distance, which obviously are hangars. And uh, I can even see a, uh, a plane, a little biplane. It's not a glider, it's definitely a biplane. I know the difference between those two now, seeing as I've been in both on this channel. If you haven't seen those two videos, then you know, they're on the channel, go find them. <laughs> so yeah, there you go, that's Beverly Airfield. And the River Hull, uh, which separates Leven from uh, Beswick on the other side, is um, beyond the airfield so you can't see it because it's way too far away but uh, it's it's over there and yeah i've seen a couple of aircraft in the sky this morning no doubt there'll be a few more before this day is out and uh, it's a nice little airfield very peaceful very quiet out here you wouldn't know that you're on the edge of a very large village if i just shut up talking for a second you can hear what i mean You can even hear the windsock. That's how quiet it is. Fantastic. There's a reason why I love the East Riding of Yorkshire. I think this goes some way to prove it. And that's been the parish of Leven. Time for me to be leaving, leaving behind. Yes, that was intended. You can all groan at me for that one. <laughs> I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. <laughs>